Hey, this is Rick from 4 Community, creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God. I was 13 when I first started going to a church and I landed in a Pentecostal church. And for me, that meant a couple of things. It meant that movies were bad. Rock and roll was bad. Uh, pool halls were bad. Playing cards or anything with dice was bad. Wearing hats in church was bad. I found the community to be awesome and I loved everything I learned about following Jesus there. I found some of those church culture rules to be slightly problematic for me as I got older. And it wasn't really because I couldn't figure out how to be a Jesus follower, you know, by saying, okay, I'm sorry, I can't go to a pool hall. I can't play cards. I can't go to movies. It's like, so we kind of ignored some of those anyways. It, it really prevented me as I was becoming an older teenager and into my early 20s, it prevented me from making really great friends and being a normal part of just society. And it, I started having some doubts, not doubts that Jesus was the correct way because I was totally sold on Jesus, but I started having some doubts, asking myself, does the Bible really say that we shouldn't be playing cards, that we shouldn't be going to movies, we shouldn't be playing pool? Where, where does that even come about in the Bible that somebody in the Bible was playing pool at some point. All of us who are following Jesus have things we hold on to that tell us how we should or how we shouldn't be living our life as a Jesus follower. And a lot of that comes from the church culture that we find ourselves in. And some of that stuff from a church culture can directly be connected to the Bible, and some of it can only in a fuzzy way kind of be connected with the Bible. Yet it's it's our norm. And, and for some of it, it's really working for us. And for others of it, maybe it's not. There's nothing wrong with culture. There's nothing wrong with church culture until it starts to make us perhaps unhealthy and stop us from moving forward. Okay, so what about you? Would you please consider pausing the video and taking a moment to answer this question? What do's and don'ts are part of your journey, maybe part of your church culture as a Jesus follower, and which ones do you find helpful and which ones do you find unhelpful? This video is based on Colossians chapter 2, verses 20 to 23. It talks about the do's and the don'ts and helps us to filter which do's and which don'ts are good and which do's and which don'ts we can just let fall away without regret. Colossians 2, 20 to 23, you have died with Christ and he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. So why do you keep on following the rules of this world such as don't handle, don't taste, don't touch? Such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate as we use them. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. Hey kids, don't forget to look in the background for all of the cool characters. And remember to watch this week's episode of Connect HQ. Bye! For community rocks. Yay! For community... Daddy, give me back my Lego. Here's a helpful tip I'm going to try to share with you today based on this text. Do less of what doesn't work and do more of what does work. I have no desire at all to combat anyone's church culture. I don't want to I don't want to tell anybody that their norms are bad. But when it comes to the point where we just can't figure stuff out and we're not moving forward with Jesus, we're regressing with Jesus because there's some do's and don'ts in our life that just don't make sense, here's what I'll say. Do less of what doesn't work and do more of what does work. The big deal in this passage is your connection with Jesus. However, after we're connected with Jesus, we generally find ourselves in some kind of community, and that community has a lot of awesome stuff going on in it that can really, really help us out. That community may also have some stuff that's going on in it that may not be so helpful. So this passage is all about us trying to discern what works and what doesn't work so that we can find our way forward as a Jesus 
follower. As we're considering all the do's and don'ts that we attach to our lifestyle as a Jesus follower, I see two thoughts from this text that can help us discern what to do more of and what to do less of. First of all, you are free to directly connect. The text says, you have died with Christ, and he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. I am soon coming to a major transition where I'm moving out of being the student practitioner psychotherapist, and I'm moving into actually being a licensed psychotherapist, at least starting qualifying with CRPO very, very soon. And what that means for me is this. It means the school stuff that I'm a part of is finally just going to die because there, there's some reports that I have to do and some tracking I have to do for my school that I don't actually have to do as a psychotherapist as I'm practicing. So very soon I am going to be experiencing freedom. I am looking forward to the death of this Excel file that I've been holding on to, keeping track of all of my non-direct client hours, all of my other hours that are absolutely meaningless in any other environment, but they're so meaningful in the school environment. I am looking forward to taking that Excel file, putting it in, in the uh, recycling bin and deleting it because it's no longer valid. It is now dead to me because I'm moving on to actually be fully licensed. I'll be celebrating the death of that Excel file. Now, I hope that that's a suitable illustration for what I'm about to share. In this passage, a death is being celebrated. It's the death of the former way that we did life. Regarding us being disconnected from God before we started following Jesus, and us in need of some kind of spiritual gurus to somehow give us some spiritual enlightenment, that's dead to us now. That way of doing life is dead. We are dead to that old kind of spirituality. Instead, we are now alive to doing life without that and doing life with Jesus. We are now directly connected with God because of our faith in Jesus. That's not to say that there's anything wrong with the Ten Commandments. They're all good. It is still wrong to murder. It is still right to honor mom and dad. But you have the freedom now to connect with Jesus personally rather than trying to connect with God through rules, just to try to make yourself good enough that maybe he'll see how good you are and he'll reward you for your goodness instead of discipline you for your badness. All that's gone. We now have the freedom to live as a friend of God, as a child of God. Now, back in the day when this was written, the spiritual powers of this world, that reference, spiritual powers of this world, it included a wide variety of religious and spiritual sources, which included paganism and cults and even whatever Judaism looked like back then. None of them and none of the spiritual religious sources today either have the power to connect you with God. The only power that connects you with God is Jesus himself, God himself, and that's through our belief in Jesus. I'm not saying that people aren't important. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that we get directly connected to God through Jesus. It's all about the simple gospel. So that brings me to the second thought. You are free to choose. The text says, why do you keep on following the rules of this world? So regarding some of those older rules, not playing pool at the pool hall was one of, I don't know where that came from, but apparently that was that was bad in the church culture. And I don't, to this day, I don't have a clue why that was ever a thing. I had a friend and he and I used to go to the pool hall once or twice a week um, after youth group and after church on Sundays. And we, we love it. We'd call each other up in the middle of the week sometimes too and say, hey, I'm feeling the need, the need to go play pool. And we'd go play pool. Loved it. You know, back in the day, that's when uh, Mortal Kombat just came out as an arcade game. And, and we ruled that game at the pool hall as well. And I told nobody. I told nobody about any of the scores that I was breaking. I told nobody about how I could clear the table or how my friend was clearing the table and how fun it all. I told nobody because... At that particular moment, there was still this thing going on in the culture where it may or may not be a good idea to go and play pool. And I mean, it's really, really silly. It was really awkward for me to try to do something that my culture said it's not good for you to do, but it was hindering me 
from moving forward in life and even from moving forward with connecting with Jesus because I just didn't understand why the rule was even there. The rule of thumb is this. Faith in Jesus and following Jesus, that leads to salvation. That's the deal. And there's nothing else really around the deal other than that. Place your faith in Jesus and then love God and love others. I mean, that's that's the summary of all that we're going to find in the Bible. There are some things that float around the church scene that are similar to the don't handle, don't taste, don't touch phrases that we see in the text here. Some of that stuff can actually be really helpful because it can keep us grounded. It, it keeps us in a community. It keeps us from our low moods, from battling depression. It, it just, it keeps us on track with Jesus. It's fine. Some of that stuff, though, just doesn't work. So here's what I'll say about that. Be curious about those behaviors. Be curious about the do's and the don'ts that you're attaching to your Jesus following. Be curious if they're helpful or if they're not helpful. If they help you move closer to Jesus or they prevent you from moving closer to Jesus and just make you look weird. If it works for you, then do more of it. If it doesn't work for you, then do less of it. What matters is your faith in Jesus and continuing to follow him. You know, those do's and those don'ts, in some cases, they can be really helpful because they keep us on track. In other cases, they could be really unhelpful because they just muddy the water. They confuse us. We're left thinking to ourselves, what in the world is going on? Why can't I go to a pool hall? Why does Jesus not want me to play pool? Okay, what matters is your faith in Jesus and continue to follow him. So if it helps you to follow Jesus, do more of that. If it doesn't help you to follow Jesus, well, do less of that. Here's the summary. Sometimes our church cultures provide us with some lifestyle do's and don'ts. Some of those do's and don'ts really help us stay on track with Jesus, and they really work for you. Do more of that. Some of those do's and don'ts really slow you down and get in the way and don't work for you as a Jesus follower at all. Do less of that. What really matters is faith in Jesus and your continued commitment to following him. Love him first and love others as yourself. That's it from me to you for now. Would you please like? Would you please share? Would you please subscribe? You know, do do all of that. That would be wonderful. Also, would you please ask for the link? We are still meeting on Zoom, so please ask for the link. We meet on Sundays, 1030 and 6 o'clock. Love to have you with us. It's awesome for a community, creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God. See you next time.